Hello and welcome to everyone joining us. Uh, I can see some people coming through, so we'll just wait a few more minutes uh, before we get the presentation on the way. Well, welcome to everyone uh, to our second webinar this week. Uh, my name is Samantha Martin, Marketing Manager of Reed Exhibition's Mining Portfolio, comprising of Amex, QME and WA Mining, and I will be supporting today's presenters. I wanted to let you all know that we have just launched the QME Virtual Seminar series, series, which is bringing some of the best sessions that were scheduled to take place during QME, and they'll be brought directly to you virtually this year. There are three sessions running on the 23rd and 24th of September, so visit QME website for more information. Now today's session will showcase the newly opened Resource Centre of Excellence. This session has been recorded, but there will be a live Q&A at the end of the video, and you will have the ability to submit questions via the chat box, and these questions will be answered at the end of the video. Today's session will be supported by Tiana Cousins, Manager Economic Development for Mackay Regional Council, Suzanne Brown, Director of McKay's Solicitors and Resource Centre of Excellence Board Member, and I believe we'll be joined by Dean Kirkwood from the Resource Industry Network. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I'll see you at the end of the video. Thank you for joining us today for the QME webinar series. Today we'll talk you through a recent project from the Mackay region, the Resources Centre of Excellence. This facility is now the showpiece of the resources sector and really demonstrates what our region is capable of. Through a strategic investment in the resources sector, Mackay Regional Council partnered with Resource Industry Network and the Queensland Government in the construction of a $7 million Mackay Resources Centre of Excellence. The state of the art facility will be open opened in August 2020. The Resource Centre of Excellence is the only one of its kind in Australia and will act as a catalyst for future investment into the region. The facility boasts an underground mining simulated training facility providing as close to real conditions underground mining experience for industry training and research purposes. The Resource Centre of Excellence will align and augment resource-related training and research facilities and services across the private and public sector. The Resource Centre of Excellence will act as a specialist skill, testing and training facility which will incorporate research and testing laboratories. This Centre of Excellence will ensure Mackay remains one of the sources of expertise in the mining, engineering, technology sector. The success of this project is attributed to Mackay Regional Council's commitment to strong partnerships with peak industry bodies and private enterprise. Through these strong ties, a council-owned asset will become an operation hub for Resource Industry Network under a longer-term agreement. The construction of this project has resulted in a $15 million economic output to the region and 34 construction jobs. We estimate 500 annual visitors to the region worth $1 million and five ongoing jobs once operational. This investment will help the region continue to be a global player in skills and training, research and innovation in the mining and met sector.
now like to introduce Mayor Greg Williamson to discuss the importance of this project to the Mackay region and why Council found it important to invest in the delivery of this project. The Mackay Regional Council is exceptionally proud of the fact that we've just recently opened the Resource Centre of Excellence and that's a, a, a huge investment done with the state government, they put in 3.6 million, we put in 3.6 million and contributed the land and we did the building of the project so we're now the landlords and it's being run by the Resource Industry Network here in Mackay. It is a fantastic facility and it really cements our place in the world in terms of the resources sector. So not only do we have a complete underground mining training facility there, we've got the ability to expand research and training across the resources sector for a number of years to come. So we're we are exceptionally proud of the Resources Centre of Excellence and the focus that our region now has on the world stage in terms of the resources sector. So thanks for joining us on this webinar. Enjoy it. Our next speaker is Tony Caruso, CEO and Managing Director of Mastermind and Chairman of the Resource Centre of Excellence Board. Tony has been involved in the project since its inception and the announcement of the state government funding. Tony has given an enormous amount of his time back to others for the prosperity of the region's resources sector and to guide and mentor the sector's emerging leaders. He was a significant supporter and motivator of the Resource Centre of Excellence vision and took up the role as the Chair of the Resource Centre of Excellence Board to oversee the successful construction and implementation of this unique and important facility for our region. Tony will discuss the establishment of the Resource Centre of Excellence Board and the Board's involvement throughout the project. The Mackay region has Australia's most significant METS cluster and is renowned for being a builder, maintainer and repairer of all things mining. Tony discusses how the Resource Centre of Excellence came about, funding sources and how the centre will enable our region to become more active in development, research, testing and training the skills of the future. So the, the RCOE project really came about um, through the strategic thinking of the RIN board. So, um, you know, this uh, region in Mackay here, the, the METS hub um, is renowned for being a, um, a builder, a constructor, a maintainer and repairer of all things to do with uh, the, the mining um, and resources space. Um, so the RIN board really sort of started to think strategically about how do we how do we move our region sort of up that value curve um, and get involved with a lot more of the development and research of uh, mines of the future. And uh, what we realised pretty quickly was that, you know, we need a, a facility that brought all that sort of thinking and collaboration together so um, we started down the path of building the center of excellence and uh, using some models that we'd seen previously um, we, we took that those concepts and uh, and then put together the RCOE concept so um, moving forward what we want is this facility to be known as um, not only a, a place where people can come and do training but a place where uh, research is done where training is done testing is done uh, and important Importantly, we're, we're training the skills of the future. So, um, so it's really about shifting our region from not only being good at the operation and building of um, the resources um, um, centres of um, out in our Bowen Basin. Um, it's about now um, sort of getting in front of that curve in the technology curve and being able to um, to do more in that value chain. Yeah, so what was, what was very clear early on was that um, the RIN role and the RCOE role were, uh, you know, quite different. And what we wanted to do was make sure that we had the skills at the board level to be able to um, ensure that both organisations were successful. So RIN being a, uh, a member-based organisation, it was important for them to continue to provide the, the very good services that they provide to their members and having the right skills around the board table for uh, for RIN and for its members. The COE board was a little bit different and uh, because it'll be heavily reliant on a different set of stakeholders and, and will service a different stakeholder group, we wanted to ensure that we had the right skills around the RCOE board table to ensure that, um, you know, that, that the needs for RCOE were met. So whilst there's a lot of synergies between the two boards and quite a lot of synergies between what RCOE and RIN will do, uh, it, you know, it, was, it was evident that there was um, clearly uh, a need for two boards and hence the establishment of the two boards who will work very closely together. 
what the RCO we will bring for industry is a, is an opportunity to um, to collaborate with universities and with the Mets Hub. Um, clearly, what happens now is uh, is very ad hoc. So, uh, industry has issues, and uh, industry will try and either solve those issues themselves, or you know, if Mets companies uh, identify those issues, they'll try and solve those issues and commercialise them. But building this facility, what we're able to do now is bring industry um, to Mackay with those issues for Mets companies to either solve and commercialise, uh, but importantly for to be able to tap into the resources of our university. So for industry, this facility is quite unique. There's nowhere else that we know of where industry, universities and the MET stakeholders come together or can come together um, to solve those issues and to uh, develop the minds of the future. So for industry, it is really a really important facility. The next stage for us is to ensure that industry gets behind what we've built here. So at this stage, the facility's been built. Uh, we've got all the, the MET stakeholders um, involved in the facility and um, stage three of it is really to get industry um, using the facility and tapping into a lot of our local resources, particularly our universities. So the, the benefits to the Mackay region is by, uh, by developing this centre of excellence, we're going to, uh, I guess, change the way we think about mining and, and the way that mining is done in this region. And what that's going to do is put us at the front of that curve in terms of the new jobs that are going to cre be created out of uh, the minds of the future. So it's it's a really, really uh, exciting proposition for Mackay, for our universities, for our schools, for our TAFE colleges, um, to be able to be at the front edge of that curve in terms of what those new jobs look like. So from a, from a regional point of view, it really will put Mackay on the map. It'll bring a lot of investment to the area. It's going to bring a lot of different stakeholders to the area. So we're talking about investment groups. Uh, we're talking about research groups. We're talking about groups that'll be testing, um, as well as groups that will be designing the jobs of the future. So for Mackay to have that squarely here right in our backyard is going to be very exciting for not only our existing uh, MET sector, for our existing industry, uh, but for those, of, um, for those people that uh, want to get into the mining industry in the future. So we're very fortunate to, uh, to receive funding and support from the, the state government and uh, clearly the, the government saw very early on uh, the benefits of bringing a facility like this to Mackay. Um, with that state funding, we were then able to also secure funding uh, through the Mackay Regional Council and uh, you know, it was a real leap of faith for both the state government and the Mackay Regional Council to get behind this project um, and we really appreciate the support from the Mackay Regional Council and the state government um, with respect to the funding. So um, seven million dollars has gone into the project to date. Um, you know, stage two of the project, we will look for additional funding. Um, the centre will run um, as a revenue centre itself and will develop its own funding, um, and, but we'll continue to rely on external funding uh, to continue to build the facility into stage two and three, whatever that may look like in the future. Michael Zimmerle is Council's Manager Major Projects, a civil engineer with experience in project management and oversaw the delivery and construction of the Resource Centre of Excellence. Today Michael will discuss the design phase, construction, uniqueness of the project and working with various stakeholders to ensure its successful delivery. Michael manages the successful delivery of Council's major capital works projects for the benefit of the community of Mackay and surrounding region. Michael managed the construction of the Resource Centre of Excellence and is our next speaker discussing the design phase, construction, uniqueness of the project and working with various stakeholders. So this is the Resource Centre of Excellence. Uh, the, this project started back in uh, March last year, 2019. Um, started off with some state funding um, that the RIN Industry Network uh, sourced through state. Um, Council matched that dollar value um, so that we could have the facility here today that we've got. Um, Council's donated the land to the site um, and then yeah and then we went out to we did the design with GHD local company um, they helped us throughout uh, with the RIN input to develop the um, office spaces the classroom spaces the laboratories workshops and the underground mining facility um, that we see at the back. Um, we, after that, went through the tender phase um, and we're lucky enough to um, secure our local company, Fergus Builders, um, who have built the uh, facility for us over the, over the next sort of eight to nine months. Um, and we're now in June 2020 and um, we have the building that we have today.
So the remaining works left, uh, we just got some landscaping works to finish off, uh, some sign offs from the building certifier and the QFES, um, so to make sure they're all compliant. And we've also got some secondary uh, separable portion works, which throughout the project, um, we uh, identified that we had some cost savings. So we've increased the floor area um, upstairs and we've created a second floor, um, which duplicates the office space and the classroom spaces. So Fergus Builders, um, like I said, it took on the contract uh, around October last year. Um, they've kicked it off. They've worked with us throughout the whole project. Um, they've been been brilliant to work with. Um, they they've also helped us with some of the development of the underground mine. We we took them through another local. Um, through Mindsight um, underground facility, which we've already currently got in town here, which is a lot smaller. Um, and that, that got them some skills and, and knowledge of what we were trying to achieve. Um, and then through the through the build, we've with the increase of the second floor, they've um, helped us manage that and, and get it to where it is today. The use of local builders um, and local companies has certainly been a benefit to the um, to the overall build. Um, it's nice and handy being able to talk face to face and, and work through all the challenges that we've, we've faced as we've gone along. So we use some specialty um, subcontractors. So Mindsight was a key um, component to the build. Um, and so Fergus have got a lot of experience with building commercial buildings. So there was no real um, concern in that. Um, it's it's you know standard day to day operations for them. Uh, but the underground facility is certainly a unique aspect of this. And um, so we've um, utilised the resources of Mindsight, uh, which, like I said before, had a, a small um, underground training facility in town here. Um, so this one is much larger than that. So we've got uh, three headings um, in this underground facility, and each one of them is the same size as the one in town. So uh, we utilise their skill sets and, um, and liaise with RIN and the other mining um, facilities and companies around the region. Uh, to give us some of the um, information that we needed to simulate the, the underground. Probably the construction in the timeline is the biggest um, achievement for this one. So, uh, like I said, it's only been just over 12 months and we've come right from concept through to um, completion. So, um, the time in which we did that and, you know, during the wet season, um, we had a little bit of wet weather towards the end of the project, which delayed some of the sealing of the car park works, uh, but the rest of that um, yeah, we managed to, to do it on time and on budget, which is just fantastic. So the building itself, um, like I said, it houses the classrooms. Um, we're going to put in some technology in here so that we can do video conferencing. Uh, there's a meeting room, some office space, um, collaborative space, and I know the uh, Resource Industry Network and the Resource Centre of Excellence Group um, are working with QUT at present uh, to try and work out some technology for the feature wall behind me. Um, so they're talking about putting a big interactive display play. Um, we've also got the lavatory in there which has a fume cupboard in there so that we can do some research and development um, and hopefully entice some of the local pageant companies to um, come and um, you know do, do that research and development in this space. Um, it's very difficult for them to get into the mining space in the live environment so hopefully this building will give them the opportunity to um, to test and trial some of those techniques and, and products before they can take them straight to the live environment. So now that it's getting to this pointy end where we're getting completed, um, we've had some more media on it um, and some of the like, industries are getting very um, uh, excited I suppose to, to be able to see the opportunities that they've got uh, within the facility. So I know some of the people we've been taking around have been talking about drone usage and development on that uh, which they use for sensing uh, wall movement and things underground so um, they'll be able to come here trial that in the you know in a safe environment um, and then before they take it out to the mines. Our next speaker is Mark Walter currently acting general manager of resource industry network and also a member of the resource center of excellence board. Mark will talk about the design and purpose of the center and how it will allow innovation and design to emerge from our region and also the training opportunities that may become available. Mark has worked in the mining space for over 40 years in both hard rock and the coal industry. Starting life as a tradesman, Mark worked his way through engineering, 
and then achieved an MBA with Sydney Business School. Working on large infrastructure projects such as the Dalrymple Bay Coal Terminal Expansion, Bear May Dornier Mine Development and as a CEO of a large mining services company within the region for the last 20 years. This has instilled in Mark a desire to see the region excel through both geographical and product diversification. This is not only achieved with coal exports, but also the world-class technology being developed in the region to service our industry. This has led to the current role working in the mining innovation space with a Mackay-based company, Veyron, developing a world-first conveyor technology being exported around the world. Mark has served as a director on the Resource Industry Network for eight years and now also serving as a director of Resource Centre of Excellence. Mark believes the region is set to become known around the world as a mining technology development region, not just an exporter of high class metallurgical coal. Mark will now talk about the purpose and design of the centre and how it allows innovation to be created within the Resource Centre of Excellence walls. Mark will also cover off on the training opportunities and benefits to the whole region. So RIN is the uh, overarching organisation uh, for the Resource Centre of Excellence. The centre is all about uh, training and innovation. So we really want to see uh, new people moving to our region and being trained up and working in our uh, world-class mining industry and also uh, our region has some excellent new technology that is uh, being exported around the world. We want a facility where our world-class uh, members from, from the region who uh, develop this technology can come and they can test their technology in a safe environment. It can be quite difficult when you're developing a new technology to take this out to a, a mine site and, and test that equipment, but here it is uh, designed for testing equipment uh, in a simulated underground environment and that makes this facility just uh, uh, so valuable to our region. So the facility is uh, designed to be very innovative. It's designed to create innovation. So th when we started to look at the design and what we needed in the centre, first and foremost we wanted the centre to look like a world-class facility. We needed the facility to just ooze that innovation that we are trying to create here. So the, the, the centre will have just state-of-the-art um, technology uh, installed into the centre. Uh, we'll have a big hero wall which is a six metre LED screen that will uh, broadcast projects that we have happening in our region, what uh, the uh, people in our region, the businesses in our region are working on and we'll be able to showcase that uh, right here in the foyer of the centre. But then we have uh, the training facilities that we use in the, in the centre here and uh, the next stage of the technology hub is to have virtual reality training in the upstairs environment. So we'll be able to simulate many different environments with the use of that VR technology. But it, ne it needs to be a comfortable place where people can come, uh, they're new to the mining industry and they can walk through this facility and get a feel for what it's going to be like to work in an underground mine. So the simulator area is just fantastic. You have to see it to believe it. Uh, you would never know that you're inside a shed in Paget when you walk into the simulator area. It is... Uh, designed to look just like an underground mine and we'll have uh, equipment in there that simulates all of the areas that you'll come across in an underground facility and the idea there is we can train people in a safe environment to do the tasks that they need to learn uh, to be uh, useful on a mine site. So the, the centre is has many aspects. Uh, we have laboratories for uh, developing technology, we have a workshop, we have offices to accommodate uh, people who come to the region to work on projects. So the centre is all-encompassing and it certainly will fit the needs of many people uh, that uh, need a facility like this from around the world. The benefits to our community I think start from a school age. 
and I think this is where the project is vitally important. We have children in our schools that see messaging uh, around, you know, coal is bad, you know, save the, the reef. You know, this is my region. I live and love this region. There is no way I would want to harm any of the, the aspects of our region. Um, so we want children from school age to be coming through here, seeing what the mining environment does and learn how we operate. So this will give them a, a, just a great inside view. And at a young age, they start to think about, well, gee, I could be an engineer, you know. I could grow up and I could do many aspects of uh, the mining, what we need in the mining community. So it's to start to instill in them that uh, mining is a great career. Um, I've been in mining for the last uh, 42 years and I love mining and I love what the industry does. So we want to create that desire within our children to grow up and be in our industry, to study here at our universities, to come out of university and work in our minds, keep our children in our region. So that's the, the first and foremost aspect, I think, uh, working with children. Then we have uh, people who want to act, enter the mining industry. So adults who come from all aspects of life that need to be trained in working in a mining environment. So the simulator and the training rooms will be used to bring people uh, skill, skill level up to what we require for the mining industry and put them through the training so that they become site ready and they can go out to site then and finish their training. So there are a number of uh, businesses in the Mackay region who already have developed uh, world-class technology that is being exported around the world. So this facility here is designed to uh, inspire, I guess, people in our region that the uh, technology or the thoughts uh, that they still have in their minds that they haven't actually got through to production yet, this facility is designed to create an atmosphere where people can come and collaborate. Uh, we talk about bringing the brightest minds together with industry's biggest problems and I think that's vitally important for our region. So we come together here, we bring people together and facilitate the uh, establishment of those ideas right through to products that are uh, mine site ready. And through that, uh, there are businesses in our region that are already exporting around the world. So the Mackay region, there is no reason why our region cannot be known throughout the world as a technology hub, where some of the best ideas in mining originated from. Amanda Walker, Community Specialist with BHP, will now discuss BMA's commitment to the Resource Centre of Excellence and also support for Central Queensland University to ensure the best skills, training and innovation continue to come out of the Mackay region. The project has been further supported by industry partners including BMA who have committed $2.3 million to research and innovation in Central Queensland which follows BMA's initial commitment of $475,000 last year to support the establishment of the Resource Centre of Excellence. Amanda will touch on BMA's support allowing the appointment of a General Manager for the Resource Centre of Excellence and a Chair of Automation and Future Work Skills at Central Central Queensland University. Amanda touches on BMA's desire for people in the industry to have the best skills and training and that is all started here in regional Queensland. BMA is proud to support the Resources Centre of Excellence. This is a world-class facility that will drive innovation in the mining and METS sector across the region. BMA has supported the Resources Centre of Excellence from the start and we just recently announced additional funding to support the appointment of a General Manager. Our initial funding contributed to the establishment of a governance model, to operating and maintenance procedures, to some brand and marketing as well. So really to set the centre up for success from day zero. For BMA, what we want to see is people in the industry or planning a career in the industry to have the best skills and training in the world. And we want them to be proud to say it all started for them right here in regional Queensland. This centre will be a hub to bring together mining and METS innovation research and training which will help drive the global competitiveness of the entire Mackay-Isaac Whitsunday region. 
Thanks for tuning in. Stay online now to go to live questions and answers with myself and Mark Walter. Okay, so we'll welcome our, our speakers back to the screen. Suzanne coming on. Hi, Dean, if you want to unmute yourself, Dean. Excellent. And then, Jen. hi, guys. Wow, I mean, that centre looks, looks amazing. I can't wait to get up and see it in person once uh, life gets back to normal. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, we've got a few questions that, that have come through. So if anybody else out there has some questions, please uh, pop them in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. Uh, but I guess, how do businesses get involved with the centre? So, uh, Suzanne, if, if they want to get involved, uh, they can contact the Resource Centre of Excellence, which is actually, um, uh, if you just call through to Resource Industry Network at this facility, they'll be able to assist to connect. We've also got a GM uh, very close to being um, appointed and starting. So once we have a permanent GM, thanks to BMA, um, then we will uh, be able to um, connect with that GM. But for now, Resource Industry Network would be the way to make contact. And we really encourage businesses to do that. Excellent. Well, that probably leads into a question from Darren, uh, who asks, will the centre only be open to RIN members? No, definitely not. Um, it will be open to any, uh, not just industry either, it will be any professional services businesses, um, anyone that really wants to use the centre um, will be able to. We even hope in the future to see tourism coming through the centre, um, you know, potentially tours for the public um, going underground. Uh, we want to see lots of school children coming through. We want to see university students coming through. It's definitely a community facility. It's not restricted to resource um, industry network members at all. Fantastic. I guess, uh, you know, the centre's only just op opened and, and you mentioned in the video that there's going to be a, a number of other kind of training simulators going on. Uh, what else will, will, will the centre offer other than the underground simulator that you kind of got going on now? 
Yeah, so look, we don't actually provide the training ourselves. We provide the facility mm -hmm. and the resources, but it's up to the businesses who want to use the centre to come and provide whatever training they would like. There are um, very large meeting rooms um, mm -hmm. for presentations with state-of-the-art technology. Um, there's going to be a mezzanine floor, which will have um, little office areas. Um, so really, the sky's the limit in terms of what it can be used Used for the facility is there um, we've got the laboratory so there can be testing there can be training going on in there we had drones flying around underground yesterday um, in a bit of a trial so you know we actually don't know what innovative things people are going to come up with and that's probably part of the excitement is the facility set up to be used for really anything it's very very diverse um, so any business that wants to run their training I mean I run a law firm by day I could take staff out there and run training for them, even though it's not industry specific. And we're really trying to make sure that we don't just brand ourselves as being mining. We're very much resources, resource mm -hmm. center of excellence. So that extends to, you know, sugar and, you know, lots of other industries. So it's, it's definitely not just a mining center. Although, you know, obviously we're very, we have the underground simulator, which is, is cold. So um, it's actually really exciting to see what the centre might be used for. And we're already getting approaches from businesses um, who want to use the centre for things we'd never even thought of. One thing at the moment that businesses are approaching us about is using our offices upstairs um, to manage their social distancing issues with respect to COVID. Mm -hmm. So... The centre's there, it's constructed, it's beautiful with all the state-of-the-art technology ready to go. However, the users want to use it, that's really up to you. And that's probably the exciting bit. Excellent. Darren's actually put in a, another question. It says, does the centre have an induction to industry facility? Um, there is the, the, there is the ability to run that sort of program. Again, we are not running any training programs ourselves. We simply um, have constructed the center and we are um, looking after the building as such and facilitating the users, but how the users want to use that facility is really up mm -hmm. to them. Um, yes, training businesses could come and conduct those sorts of trainings there, but we're not ourselves conducting any training. Actually, an extension on that. Uh, yeah. Suzanne, and there are a number of training organisations that have come and, and had a look at the facility and, and um, you know, they, they are thinking that all, all sorts of training, you know, up, you know, one's actually looking at Cert 2 uh, underground qualifications as, as, as well as, you know, your, your, your um, basic underground and open cut training as well, inductions mm -hmm. can be done, you know, they're, okay. they're looking at doing all that, that, that sort of training on site here. So do, do businesses, I guess, rent the space at the facility or is, you know, how do, how do businesses actually utilise the, the spaces at the centre? Yeah, so um, it's a user pays model. Um, there's a set of terms and conditions around renting the facility, um, mm -hmm. but it's pretty flexible in so far as how they rent it, what time frame. Um, so really it's a matter for them just to contact the resource industry network and make those arrangements. And can businesses outside of the region utilise a centre or is it really focused on, on providing a platform for, for, the, for local business? No, definitely anybody can use the centre, whether they're local or not. In fact, we hope to have exhibitions there. We hope to have, um, you know, functions there. We hope to have that engagement. And part of it is about connecting industry with solutions. So we want people from outside of Mackay to come in and see what our region can showcase and offer. So definitely come and see it. Excellent. So we've got a, another question from, from uh, Gunther. Uh, there was a lot of talk about research in the presentations. What research facilities and technology are you offering and exactly what research do you envisage happening at the centre? Yep. Yeah, so we've got the laboratories and we've got a control room ready to go. Um, we've also obviously got the underground simulator. Um, so if someone develops a product, 
and they want to test it um, or they want to conduct some research on how to solve an industry solution, we're sort of hoping that we can connect different people with ideas or problems and put them together and they'll go and do some research and actually solve those industry problems and come up with some innovative solution in the centre. Mm. Um, as I said, testing products uh, that have been designed, it makes it heaps easier to do that. Um, again, you know, we're hoping to have university students and we've got, um, you know, alliances with um, CQU and QUT around students coming to use the laboratories to do, um, you know, experimental um, studies in the underground simulator. Like I said, we had drones in there yesterday, um, which, you know, is looking at whether drones can solve some of the industry problems underground. So, um, Again, really, it's however people want to use it. We don't know at this stage exactly what research is going to be undertaken, but we've put all the facilities there to allow it to be undertaken. Um, and the technology is state of the art. We've got, um, I'm, I'm not a very technological person, but um, it's been second to none in terms of what's been put in that center in terms of the AV equipment, and we're gonna have the hero wall. Um, but definitely, you know, we're up for sort of talking to anyone who has specific requirements. So uh, Guns has just elaborated a bit further on his questions. Is what laboratories do you have? Um, there's a laboratory on the underground. I'm not sure on the specific, sorry, of exactly what detail the um, person asking the question mm. is wanting to know. But if they wanted to connect with us offline, we could certainly provide that detail. Um, as a director, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with exactly what level of laboratory it is. I've been in the laboratory and it, it <laughs> looks very lovely. It's very clinical. Yeah, so, I know, Dean, um, Dean, are you able I to elaborate? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, I know Gunther actually um, was involved in the project years ago when they first started um, as a from JCU at the time so um, I wouldn't be able to, um, I guess it is a like universities want to come in and, and run or what testing and and the like would like needs to happen so there is a gym cupboard there as Suzanne said and it's all set up ready to go um, but really can be tailored and modified to what the user needs um, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the board, but I'm sure they'd be happy to talk to JCU along, you know, the, the way they have dealt with the other universities that are interested as well. Awesome. So Darren's got a, another question. I think it was uh, further to the one that he put further. It said, how does the centre facilitate the introduction of this new technology that's kind of coming from the centre to the industry? So how do you kind of, con you know, connect the next piece? Yeah. So at the moment, it's just being constructed. So it's very much in its infancy. Um, obviously, we will partner with Resource Industry Network around engaging that industry support mm -hmm. um, and Resource Industry Network itself um, will engage with um, all the key stakeholders to try and get those bigger players and smaller players to come together within the facility in order to identify what problems there are and how solutions um, can be tailored to solve those problems. Um, so at the moment, you know, we don't have a GM yet. We're about to appoint a GM. So once we get a GM, there'll be certainly a lot more business modelling and a lot more planning around stage two. So we've just mm -hmm. constructed and now obviously we're going to hit the ground and actually get the centre operational and, and work out strategies for how we do connect um, the industry with those solutions. But already we're being inundated with people contacting us interested in using the facility. And like I said, for uses we hadn't even contemplated. So mm. hopefully it will happy, happen relatively organically because there's so much enthusiasm about this facility and we will have people coming to us and then we can simply connect the dots because they'll all be there for us to put together. So. Excellent. Yeah. So I guess, you know, you, you want the, uh, the centre to, to be not only a, a showcase of what's going, what Mackay can do, but you, you, you want the industry to come to you guys in the region, right, and utilise your services. Definitely, but we don't want it to be region-centric. Like I said, the technology there is able to put 
um, you know, our um, inventions on the world stage. So we hope that people will be able to come to the centre and connect with overseas participants and people in other places without them having to physically be here. Um, and also that people will come to the facility in order to collaborate. So it's certainly um, a, we see it as a universal type centre. Just from a RIN perspective there, we've already um, made huge strides to, to um, reaching out to industry, not only in Australia, but all around the world, especially mm -hmm. through the export hub that, that we have up and going. So we're building relationships, you know, with, with um, you know, stakeholders all around the world. And, and the aim is to bring their problems to us and, and as a group of not only uh, businesses in this region, but combining mm -hmm. with, with businesses from other regions, coming up with solutions to that. So it's, so it's a real conduit to be able to uh, find those solutions to, to the world's biggest mining problems. I think too, we've got very strong connections with GW3 and they're doing a transformation piece at the moment, which is heavily focused on innovation. So um, I think that within the region, there is this, um, emerging excitement around innovation. So working with those types of groups will hopefully also um, bring to us people who have exciting ideas that just need to be connected with others to develop those and commercialise those. So well, I think Darren's got one, another question and then I think that'll we'll wrap up after this one. If anybody else has got any, any questions that they have, pop them in quickly and we'll try and get to them. But Darren said, how do you envisage the centre being visible on the world stage, or is it a little too early to kind of tell? No, no, that's part of um, the export hub's role as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, so um, I'll put my hand up as, as manager of the export hub within within uh, RIN. You know, my role is to ensure that um, the the centre of excellence is visible on the world stage, and that's all part of that building those relationships with with key players around the world. Mm -hmm. um, our aim, as as people have touched on, is is to have have groups of um, you know, people from around the world, businesses from around the world to come to the, to the centre and to, you know, collaborate with, with, with businesses from all around Australia and our region. So, so part, of, part of my role is, is to, you know, develop a marketing plan and export uh, marketing strategy to, in, to ensure that, that we are visible all around the world, be that the, the Mackay Isaac with Sunday region, but um, the centre of excellence as well. And certainly at board level, we're focused on this and we've already uh, considered representation at various um, uh, conferences and things overseas and we had uh, committed funds towards that, but obviously then COVID put the handbrake on all of those plans. So certainly that's something that we are focused on and getting the word out to the world that we're here and open mm -hmm. for business, come and see us. So how do you make sure that you kind of don't get pigeonholed as just a centre for mining? How do you make sure that the other industries know that they can utilise this? Yep, so at the moment, it's something that's being talked about at the board level, uh, and we are engaging with other resource sectors around use of the facility, and we mm -hmm. are inviting them to come and do tours and talk to them individually about how their industry might be able to use and benefit from our facility. So we're definitely reaching out um, across the board to make sure that all of those um, resource industries, other than mining, are aware of and engaged in our facility right from the start. Excellent. So I guess how do people find out more information and that can kind of wrap us up? So where do they go to find out more about the centre and how to get involved? For the moment, probably best to contact Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Dean's been thrown under the bus on that one. <laughs> That's all right. But um, for, for the appropriate contacts, just jump onto the RIN website, resourceindustrynetwork.org.au um, and it's got my contact details. It's got, got um, you know, phone and email um, so please feel free to contact us and more than happy to talk about the centre we think it's a fantastic um, innovation from for the region. Fantastic well thank you guys so much for, for being involved in in the webinar today and uh, yeah if anybody's got any more questions please reach out to to Dean directly uh, but uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, thanks for getting involved. Thank you so much. Thanks guys thanks, see you later. Thank you bye all.